Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and begin. Yes, uh, you may. Go right ahead. <laughs> You can't see my face. Um, that might be a good thing. I'm less nervous that way. But um, good okay. evening, everyone. And um, welcome again. Uh, this evening, by God's grace, I would like to be sharing my testimony on how God took me as a single mother of four children to the country. Um, hi, uh, the God we serve is so merciful, loving, and he just wants to, to bless us. He truly does. Um, I have had so many ups and downs with my walk with the Lord. But, you know, he is so merciful and so faithful that he still allowed me uh, to, be, to be blessed, just to, to share the blessing because of my obedience to wanting to only follow his will. So that I don't lose my nerves, let's go ahead and pray together once more, please. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all of the viewers um, out there, Lord, for uh, the host of this presentation, Narrow, Light, Narrow Way, Lord. We just, I just want to pray, Lord, that um, I can bring encouragement to someone, Lord, though I don't feel worthy and I don't feel very special, Lord. Um, it's, just, it's not about me, Lord. It's to give you all the glory, Lord. And I just thank you for this opportunity, Lord. And please bless everyone in their viewing of this presentation, Lord, that they may glean something that may be encouraging to them. I ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So this is me. Um, uh, this is my four children, uh, Devante, he is 16 years old now, and then uh, my son right next to him, he is three years old, my daughter, Ajene, and my little one, Alana. And so this is us uh, going to our country living in. Okay. First um, learn. I'm just noticing the sound is a little distorted. I'm not too sure if it's on, it might be on your end. Yeah. Whatever Can you invite, have it close to the, to the data. Yeah. I'm not too sure what's causing the, the sound distortion. Is you it, hearing me clearly? Yes, I'm going to try to get off of my much other better. screen. Much better. Okay, that sounds better. It's much better? Yes. yes. Okay, so go ahead. Okay. Okay, so all I did was pray and introduce my children. Um, but I first learned about country living through uh, Doug, Pastor Doug Batchelor and um, his story. And you, some of you may be familiar, The Richest Caveman. Um, so I just uh, listened to him on YouTube and then I read his book. And in his book, uh, if any of you have are familiar, or those who are actually not familiar, um, Doug Batchelor actually uh, was on his uh, journey to finding uh, the Lord and, and his purpose, as his, if you know his background. And he was in a cave. And I said, well, you know, at the time, I, I only had my eldest son and my eldest daughter. So it was only the three of us. And I said, you know what? We don't need very much to live to be happy. Um, a little tiny house would be perfect because at that time we were watching, um, <laughs> we were watching, uh, what was that? Netflix. So they had a tiny, tiny house living something like that. And on YouTube, I was seeing people in RVs or our yurts. So those are tents. And I said, well, you know, any of those things would do for us. That's, that's all we need. And, um, then after I learned about, uh, country living from Miss, Miss White, and I'm not quite sure when exactly I read that, but it couldn't have been too far after because because I realized, well, yes, this is exactly um, what, what we need to be doing. So, so I read that and it's a small little um, pamphlet and it was very encouraging. So I said, OK, this is exactly uh, what I want to do. So um, sometime later, um, You'll see why it was sometime later um, as I continue. In 2018, I read, I read uh, Last Day's Events, and that really lit a fire under me. Um, at this point, I already knew that I wanted to move to Arizona, um, uh, but I just didn't know where or how or 
you know, what we were going to do. And at the time we were living in a brand new three bedroom apartment where we were actually the first tenant. So no one had ever lived in this brand new apartment before us. So, um, but I, that is a, um, a, uh, preview of what's to come. <laughs> so from country living, um, one of these quotes, uh, uh, that were really encouraging to me was uh, chapter seven, guided by God's providence. As God opens the way, the time has come when as God opens the way, families should move out of the cities. The children should be taken into the country. The parents should get as suitable a place as their means will allow. Though the dwelling may be small, yet there should be land in connection with it that may be cultivated. So this is where I said, you know, if I can just find some property somewhere very cheap, I will live in a tent just to start. <laughs> and so another quote that I very much enjoyed was, um, to help open the way more and more as time advances, our people will have to leave the cities. For years, we have been instructed that our brethren and sisters, especially families with children should plan to leave the cities as the way opens before them to do so. Many will have to labor earnestly to help open the way, but until it is possible for them to leave, so long as they remain, they should be most active in doing missionary work however limited their sphere of influence may be. And I think um, our brother and sister just shared that as well. So that's, that shows that, you know, it's a very um, influential statement. And the last statement that I've pretty, really enjoyed from Country Living was spread every plan before God. We cannot have a weak faith now. We cannot be safe in listless, indolent, and slothful attitudes. Every jot of ability is to be used. A sharp, calm, deep thinking is to be done. The wisdom of any human agent is not sufficient for the planning and uh, devising in this time. Spread every plan before God with fasting and with humbling of soul before the Lord Jesus. And committed thy ways unto the Lord. The sure promise is he will direct the paths. He is infinite in resource, the Holy One of Israel, who calls the host of heavens by name. And so as you can see, um, I had just shared on the uh, next slide here, over here, um, the, the whole book, if you have not had the chance to read that, I strongly suggest that you give it a good read. And so... I just inserted um, here the uh, chapter seven from the last day's events um, as well. There, uh, this quote was just read, so I will skip it, that there is not one family in a hundred who will not be improved physically, mentally, or spiritually uh, by residing in the cities. And since that quote was read, I'll just interject um, a little preview once again, that when I was in the city, in the apartment, we were on a three-story building apartment, uh, things were just um, noisy and, and you always heard something. There was no privacy. And, you know, uh, the children were just different. And, and the way they are in hindsight, being here in the country now and the way they run around outside with no shoes, it is such a difference. And they're so happy to be here. But I'll continue. So from last day's events, uh, rich blessings in, in a natural environment. We say again, out of the cities, do not consider it a great deprivation that you must go into the hills and mountains, but seek for the retirement, but seek for that retirement where you can be alone with God to learn his will and way. Um, and, uh, this, oh, okay, I can move this. I had something blocking my screen. So um, the cities are filled with temptation. We should plan our work in such a way to keep our young people as far as possible from the contamination. That's from Adventist Home, but it's also in last day's events. Um, it is time for our people to take their families from the cities into more retired locations. Else many of them, else many of the youth and many of 
also of those older in years, will be ensnared and taken by the enemy. And the last quote here is, the Lord calls his people to locate away from the cities in such an hour as ye think not. Fire and brimstone will be rained from heaven upon the cities. Proportionate to their sins in their will be their visitation. When one city is destroyed, let not our people regard this matter as a light affair and think that it may be if favorable opportunity offers build themselves home in the same destroyed cities. So if we can remember what happened in Paradise, California, I'm sure that property there is quite cheap, but we know from council that that wouldn't be a, a proper place to go. Um, let all who would understand the meaning of these things read the 11th chapter of Revelation. Revelation. Read every verse and learn the things that are yet to take place in the cities. Read also the scenes portrayed in the 18th chapter of the same book. Fathers and mothers who possess a piece of land and a comfortable home are kings and queens. And so after much prayer, studying and research, I knew that this had to be the way that I went with my family. So at the time, yeah, my son was much smaller. <laughs> and that's Devante in, in the end. And then Ajane is in the middle and Alana, the, the little one at the time. And these were the ages that we decided. And the picture in the middle is of my um, daughter that's 13 now. And that's the front of the RV door. But again, that is another um, thing that will be coming up very shortly. So at the time, it was 2016, I only had my three older children. I bought that RV that you see them in here. And we moved into the RV and I looked on Craigslist and I rented a spot um, from a young lady. And I said, well, this was a start because there's no way at the time that I could have afforded a piece of property. And I was at that time in Washington state. Washington state is a very expensive state. Um, so I said, one step at a time, Lord, and I will um, save up what I would be spending in rent to be able to purchase a property. So the lady, however, that I was staying with was a renter. And at the time when I, um, followed her ad, she told me it was her property, but come to find out that she was renting it. And so that property was actually sold. So I had to move, um, I had to move back into my grandma's house and then I stored that, that RV uh, for some time. So it was a big setback in our journey towards country living along with the fact that the church we were attending wasn't preaching and teaching messages for the last days and duties of motherhood and working full time, I put off looking for the property. I went back to normal day-to-day -day life. However, God was still tugging at my, my heart ever so gently. Let's stop here and just think in your life when your goals were placed on hold and how did you feel? So I know it's very discouraging. I know you may think, oh, it's no use, but that's not the truth. It, it could be for several different reasons. I, I put it here, it may be God's perfect timing, but if we think about it, it, it could be for character building. It could be for growth. Um, because maybe if you made a move at that time, other things were not, wouldn't have been in alignment. For example, if I had left at that time, I probably wouldn't have been where I am today. Um, because things had not just fallen in place, but the Lord had to um, put it in my heart and mind that this was something that I had to do. Um, in hindsight, I wish I had been a little bit more faithful and more persistent and consistent, but nevertheless, um, the Lord took uh, my missteps and he blessed them anyhow, because he is just a faithful and loving God. So um, at that time, I, I'm very, a uh, very independent person. So staying with my grandma didn't work for too long. Um, so I ended up getting a brand new apartment, as you can see in these two pictures here. And um, this was the brand new apartment that I said that we were the first tenants in. And uh, sometime later, uh, in 2017, we found out that we were going to have another baby. 
And um, just to interject, I'm sure some of you may be wondering, um, my eldest um, is was conceived when I was in the world completely. I was very young. And my last three are for the same person. However, um, due to difference in where I wanted to go, I wanted to follow the Lord uh, completely. Um, we had to separate. And um, so so my those three are, are for the same, same person. And uh, yes, yeah, so I just thought maybe some of you may be wondering. And since I'm an oversharer, I decided to share. <laughs> um, anyway, so let's continue. So things... We're changing uh, around our world. Things just didn't make sense. So if you remember around 2016, 17, how the changes that were made in our world were just the precursor to what we're going through now. I just remember thinking, how can someone work full time and still not be able to afford even a small home? I thought the American dream was just a lie. A lie. And I know many of you may be in the Caribbean, which I do have some roots um, from the Caribbean. My mother and my grandmother. They're from um, Honduras. And I was actually raised back and forth between um, Washington State and the Cayman Islands. So um, I'm very familiar with um, island lifestyle and um, love it. And I'm so wishing I could have been there sometimes, but the Lord put us where he put us. So back to this. So uh, I thought the American dream was a lie. And, you know, it, it wasn't what it used to be right? Um, another problem that I had was thinking, why are people at church okay with the same sermons of Jesus loves you and, and nothing deeper? Why Why will we not go deeper and think more of, you know, what the Lord wants from us? So I stopped asking questions and started seeking um, for myself. So I began to watch Save to Serve online to be fed spiritually because my walk um, wasn't strong. It was in and out because of my upbringing going from Washington, where my grandma was in church, to Cayman, where my mother wasn't going to church. So I had this uh, teeter-tottering spiritual walk. Um, but still, the Lord is, is faithful, and, and I wanted to do his will. So at the time when we were watching uh, Save to Serve Online, um, he was talking about cutting out dairy and meat and coffee and, and dress reform. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> so many changes, but I embraced them. I said, you know what? If that's what we should do, that's what we will do. And on top of that, living, you know, in this brand new apartment where people, you know, most people would have just been happy. It's new. I have a job. We have a car. Um, everything is great, but it wasn't. The children were having issues at school. And I, I remember being um, in the apartment and can hear my neighbors just laying in my bed and their room was right next to mine. I can hear them at night. Their children would be crying and screaming. I would hear all of that. I could just hear them talking even. And as I mentioned before, it was a three-story building. And I just was like, oh, you know, this is just too much. I began to dream of country living again. So with this new baby, um, he was born in uh, 2017 in November, actually. Uh, I said, you know, no, no more of this. I I wasn't working at the time because I was on maternity leave. And I spent that time, oh man, searching YouTube videos and all kinds of things. Um, so at the time uh, of giving up the meat and the dairy, um, we weren't necessarily having family worship. And so we implement, we started implementing uh, family worship and I began to learn about the eight laws of health, which um, is really wonderful. And sometimes it could be tough to put all things in practice uh, into play and it still takes time, but most of all, we must remember to try our best. And until I, I put a previous uh, presentation together. I didn't make the connection that the Lord was actually purifying my diet because at the time I was eating um, flesh food, clean flesh food. And um, we know when we, we have flesh food, it makes it harder for the Holy Spirit to truly connect with us. Not to say it's impossible because it is not, but it is so much better when your mind is free of all those um, uh, toxicity that the eating dairy and, and meat does to your body. 
And so I had tons of questions uh, floating around in my head, like how will I really be able to do this? I began to think again about maybe I can convert a bus or a shed or a shipping container. Um, I asked questions like, Lord, how can I afford this property? And how will I homeschool the children? I don't have a degree. I'm, I'm just not worthy. Like, I don't even think that I have the patience to be able to, um, to do this with them. And I didn't know anyone any other place than in, besides Washington. And because I already had my RV trailer, I said, uh, and I only had a, a little vehicle at the time, how in the world will I move this, Lord? How will I move this trailer even if I do find a property? But I continued to do my research, and here are some of the my sources of research. We have um, um, Save to Serve here, and of course, uh, Pastor Doug Batchelor was in the very beginning. But uh, the Lord w was so, <laughs> so gracious. So City Exodus um, is another um, SCA family that is country living. And at the time, I saw, as you can see here, you'll see City Exodus episode one there. Uh, I saw their picture and I said, oh, look at that beautiful family. They have I have nothing in common with them. They, there's no way I can glean anything from them because I'm sure they just have everything put together. There's no way. Uh, so I actually didn't watch them for a while. Uh, I continued to watch uh, many others. And um, as I began to wonder about homeschooling, I, I came across Sunlight uh, Ministry and Out of the Cities um, from Living Mana Media. So as you can see on the screen here, these are things that I, I watched and I'm sure many of you have maybe stumbled across at one point or the other. Um, also in wondering, you know, how can I do these things? These are just some of my resources that I, I really did share. I, I pulled it out of my Pinterest and how can I do survival things, our road school, or you know, just different things, off-grid off -grid land and kids stuff. And as I was at that time trying to go plant-based at the time, thought it was just called vegan. Um, but we know now some of you may or may not know, but vegan is, is a more worldly coin term. We should really be using um, terms like plant-based and things like that. So um, I looked up tiny space ideas and shipping containers. And um, over here at the top, you'll see um, it says my little homes. This family actually builds um, earth bag homes. And um, because I was playing with the idea of Arizona, um, because that was online doing property searches, uh, really affordable uh, property. So I found this gentleman here, Arizona Hot Homestead, which gives a lot of off-grid um, solutions and alternatives. And at the bottom here, this is a, a gentleman that purifies his water uh, with filters. And uh, this is uh, from Sunlight Ministries. And um, yes, the, just things that I was researching and shared and thought it might be helpful. Um, I continued to pray and do research um, on, you know, what I should do. And these are some of the verses that, that stuck to me, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 31, 8, and the, and the Lord, he, it is, that doeth go before thee, he will be with thee, he will not fail thee, neither forsake thee, fear not, neither be dismayed. And um, I will leave that up for anyone who wants to to jot those scriptures down. Uh, these were some of my favorites. Um, so as I was doing my research, um, I decided to go back. The Holy Spirit impressed me to watch City Exodus. That was the family I said that I didn't um, that I didn't want to watch because I said for sure they they will have nothing in common with me. Um, but I watched the first one, the second one, the third one, I was convinced. And I emailed them and I shared my story with them. And uh, we, uh, they emailed me back and they were so kind and gracious. Um, and they invited me to come out to visit in Arizona. Uh, 
So I started making arrangements. So this had been um, a few months now because um, this was a course of uh, when my son was born up until he was about three to four months. So I made up my mind that I was going to move to the country. Not quite sure of all the details, just determined that I would do so. So I began to tell my family and friends what I was going to do next. And of course, they had the same questions like, well, where will you work and where will you live? And what about the children's education? How will you have water? What about the electricity, um, electric? Um, you don't know anybody. And are you crazy? You're a single mom with four children. Many, many more concerns. Um, I mean, to tell you, my mother, I told her um, that I was going to get property somewhere. I was going to live off grid. And she said, Michelle, if you do that, I will call CPS on you myself. And I said, oh, no, what are you saying? And, and so we got into a, a tiff about that because she just didn't understand. Um, I just had to keep reminding myself from the scriptures that I just shared. Um, I don't, I feel like I'm lagging. That's why I skipped those. Um, but I just remembered repeating those promises back to myself and one of my favorites ones was Philippians 4 13 I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me and so that's where I had the peace from um God will provide um and even though I, I still had concerns for myself the difference was I had peace so um just know that the enemy will use anyone he can to discourage you but don't let him just cling to the promises of God So I prayed a lot for guidance. I listened to a lot of sermons. Um, I studied uh, with Save to Serve Ministries. And uh, I started reading bits and pieces of The Great Controversy, which was another great tool that helped me see the truth behind the last days. And a few more scriptures, uh, James 1, 5, and 6. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, uh, that giveth to all men liberally and abideth not and it shall be given. In Isaiah 41, 18, I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and dry land springs of water. And I thought to myself, Lord, I, I don't think I can afford to, um, to, to go to the country. Um, but again, another quote, our heavenly father has a thousand ways to provide for us, which we know nothing. Those who accept the one principle by making the service of God supreme will find perplexities vanish and a plain path before their feet. So I did things on my own uh, that I thought to be right. Uh, I returned a faithful tide and we know when we return a faithful tithe that the Lord does bless and multiplies the 90 more than what we can do with the 100%. And of course, for those that live in the United States, the tax return season is, is definitely the time of year that if, if you plan and you're diligent, you can get a lot done if you're, if you're um, studious with, your, with this money. And I, I was, I tried to be. Um, I shopped at Goodwill and only bought things that were on sale. I learned that almost anything could be used and recycled. And here I emailed Ernie and Kim and they were and still are very encouraged. And they invited us to come to Arizona. So I was able to travel uh, with my son. Uh, he was about three months old, and we visited, and we were hosted by the Leons and Uncle Nestor, and it was a, a, a blessing. For two weeks, they had us here for two weeks, and originally, I had only planned to stay here with them for a little while, maybe a week, and check the area and go to other areas um, that were more closer uh, not closer, but uh, more similar to terrain as Washington with the, the big evergreen trees. 
But as I was here and just meeting the people and going to church, I just fell in love with everyone and the town and the views. I'm sorry, my camera's not working because I uh, hopefully I can finish before the sun goes down and show you just the miraculous um, views that this town has to offer, mountains everywhere. And so it was the hand of God that was guiding my steps. And after visiting here for the two weeks, I decided this is where I will make home. And, and uh, that, that's what I did. So I returned. Oh, yep. So, um, as I, when I was here visiting in Arizona, I met a gentleman um, that was on a main road and he had a big school bus uh, on his property. So I talked stopped and talked to him and asked him, you know, how much the bus would be. And, and we, we just became friends. I ended up doing some work while I was here because I told him that I was a caregiver and um, just a wonderful person. And, and God will use people, a anyone that, it, that has that open heart, he will use them. And I also met many of the church members and they were so kind and inviting and we became friends. Um, I also saw that the time of year that I came to visit, it wasn't as hot as they say in uh, in Arizona. So, and of course, like I just said, the mountain views and the affordable prices. And they also had jobs in the town <laughs> that I saw. So I went home and I packed everything we had and I was ready to allow God to lead us. Um, again, I shopped at the outlet Goodwills because for bigger clothes, because at that time I was just convinced that Sunday law was right around the corner. We didn't have much time. I was, I had that sense of urgency. And even now, um, I still have clothes for the children, a uh, bigger size because it was so affordable. You pay for the pound by the clothes, for the clothes, not by single item. Um, and I shop for tools that I can, that I could. I got solar panels and, um, started saving my juice and almond jugs, uh, almond milk jugs. Um, and I packed up everything. And in three months, we left that brand new apartment um, with my four children in tote, and uh, we moved back to Arizona. Now, those thousand questions that I had came back up. <laughs> so um, one of them was, Lord, I only have this car. How can I get the RV to Arizona? And um, one day I saw someone driving a U-Haul and they had a travel, tra uh, travel trailer behind it. And I said, oh, that's how, praise the Lord. <laughs> and so the Lord will give you wisdom if you ask him and, and he'll just let you see things or hear people overhear a conversation just to, to communicate and let you, reassure you, give you that reassurance. And um, so, I made two trips actually to, to three trips to Arizona, three trips. So the first trip was when I visited um, brother Ernie and sister Kim. And the second trip was right when we moved out of the apartment, I packed it all up with the, packed everything we owned in that, that size of U-Haul and the travel trailer. And I, had never driven or even towed it, my my travel trailer. And if anybody's ever towed anything, um, that you know that it is quite difficult to make those turns when you have to go right, you must turn the steering wheel left and vice versa. And so my RV was in this the storage and um, we had just finished pack unpacking the apartment, loaded it up to the U-Haul and I drove straight to the, um, to the storage where the um travel trailer was with my two two sons and um <laughs> was trying to I wish my you could I have my camera was working maybe I'll uh, uh let's see one moment I'm trying to oh, my mic. Uh, here we go. You could just, uh, you could try it, you know. Yeah. Yes. There we go. So, there we go. So imagine, imagine, imagine having a, um, uh, a space where you're, where you're parked in a space like this, but you only have this much space to go. 
So I had to get the U-Haul connected and to get to turn out of this space. And so as I am, got it, got the U-Haul connected to the travel trailer and I was coming out trying to make a, make a turn to come up this way, I jammed it up. So the U-Haul and the RV were, were like a V-shape then and I could not back up because I didn't know right goes left and left goes right <laughs> when you have a separate trailer. And I was like, Lord, what am I gonna do? I panicked. I called the owner uh, to the, to the uh, storage center and he came and he was such a, a blessing. He showed me, he gave me those tips that I needed. He helped me put my license plate on because I didn't do that. He helped me set up the brake lights so that the brake lights, uh, he was such a blessing. And I tell you, it was through the grace of God that this, this man came. It was late at night and he still came and he helped me. And it was such a blessing. So I just, I just wanted you to see my face so that you could understand that this was not an easy task um, to try to do. Um, so I'm gonna go back to my, um, my screen here. And I'm sorry, my, it looks like my, it goes back, it goes away, huh? Guess you can't see me again. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I hope this is a blessing so far and I'm making perfect sense. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, Amen. yes it is. Amen. I see that I Amen. see that you have a lot in common with us. Um the oh. <laughs> before, before the move. I saw that. Yes, yes, because when God calls us, we, we have to go and you know it, it we just have to do that. So God is so good. We like I said, I had never ever driven the told this travel trailer before and it, it was about a it's a 27 footer so along with the 15 foot u-haul <laughs> i said i prayed so hard and i held my breath and i just drove and prayed and drove and prayed and prayed and drove and i'm telling you to this day i'm convinced the angels were driving for those first few hours <laughs> because i don't remember even knowing how to get out of this and it's so funny because I had the GPS on and I was supposed, oh, excuse me, I was supposed to go through California, but because I took a wrong turn, I ended up having to go through another state, Nevada or Oregon, Nevada. And if you were going, if I was traveling through California, like how the, the original plan was, I would have had plenty of rest stops. Oh no, this this way that I went was pure wilderness. No, no gas stations, no traffic. I said, Lord, I was, every time I saw a gas station, I stopped and I refilled the tank so many times because I didn't know when I was going to see another one. <laughs> but praise God, he made us, we got through. So by God's grace, we made it to Arizona, but still, I still had maybe not a thousand, 10,000 questions. Maybe it was more like 9,000. 900 <laughs> questions at this point uh, and concerns. Um, so my son, uh, the two boys and myself, we reached Arizona. And like I said, we had made some contacts when we were here the, the first time. And so I was, I'll just read what I have here. So Lord, um, where will I store the RV at when we get to Arizona? Michelle, was, Michelle? yes. Michelle? Sorry, we're not seeing your screen anymore. Oh no. Okay. Uh Okay, but you can hear me, yes? Okay. So someone tell me when yes, they can hear you. Me. But you just can't see my screen. Yeah. Yes. I should have left well enough alone. <laughs> <laughs> Just hit the share again. Yeah, I need to be back. Share okay. screen. Big screen button in the bottom. Okay. So me. Mm -hmm.
Awesome. Are you seeing it again? Yes. yes we okay. Are. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. And. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's right. There we go. Okay. Okay. Uh, is this where I was? <laughs> Yeah. So when we, when we, when I was driving to, to Arizona, um, I didn't know quite where I was going to store the RV at, at that time. Um, I didn't, I didn't have, um, even know where we were going to stay for the few days, because what happened was we were going to bring everything here, drop everything off, um, store the, find somewhere to store the RV, throw everything in a, um, excuse me, sorry, uh, um, throw everything in a uh, storage uh, storage place and fly home. So we only had maybe four days to get everything done. So uh, that's including the drive from, from when I booked the tickets. So we get here and I said, Lord, what, what, where are we going to store this? And he reminded me of uh, the gentleman that I had met that had the bus in his yard because see, he, he had buses for sale, he had, or just one bus and other things, uh, other trailers, um, but he had a lot of space. So the Lord put him in my mind. I called him and I said, hey, would you be willing to store my RV for, um, for a couple of weeks until I return? And he said, of course. And I said, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. So that was and um, one check off the list. Um, and then we found um, a storage place in town. Actually, one of the church members called all over town to find us a place. And, and she helped, we found a place and they helped us unload the truck. And she had just come back from mission, mission field. So she wasn't even as strong as she is now. Now that hindsight, I see, you know, and, and the Lord just used people to, to help me. Um, so that that's what happened. Yeah. So uh, the Lord took some more questions that I have and took care of it for me. And so after we took care of everything that was um, done, uh, everything, our stuff in storage and the RV stored, we flew back to Washington. And I still had some questions. <laughs> I said, Lord, when we move to Arizona, where will we move? How will I move? the the RV to from um, the gentleman's house and where am I going to live and things like that. So um, when I came back to Washington, um, we stayed with my grandma for, you know, for that time until we, we came back because we were going to drive a car back. And mind you, when I, the year that I had my son in 2017, and all this happened, uh, the move happened in 2018 just because uh, my son was born in November. He was three months. So that the earlier part of, of um, 2018, all this was taking place. So I had a, a repo because I missed one payment. Um, and I told the people, okay, I get paid this day, please take it then, or money will be in my account this day, please take it then. They didn't. So then the next, the, they, they took the vehicle. Anyways, that was okay. And it was a blessing in disguise. And even though I was pretty devastated about it because I said, oh no, there goes a hit to my credit. The Lord was, was so um, gracious that he still helped me get another vehicle. It was a 2004 uh, Chevy Suburban. So that would have been able to tow the travel trailer and since I said well I, I I hauled it all the way from hauled it all the way from Washington to Arizona I'm sure I can take it from his property to to wherever we go and I also didn't know where we were going to stay and of course the Lord put um, the gentleman back into my mind and I called him up and I said hey would you be willing to let us stay where stay on your property um um, and rent for you. And of course, he was happy to help. And he said, of course, and he charged me such a small amount for uh, rent space, which was such a blessing because I uh, was not working anymore because I obviously moved to another state. Um, so off we went in our new suburban to Arizona. And I thought, well, Lord, what will I do for money? And of course, the thought uh, 
it's funny. I, I use these, this, this picture again, because, um, when we were in town, remember I said that there was jobs and I saw, you know, hiring jobs and indeed jobs, but I saw a school bus and the school bus was right by the, one of the stores. And it said, now hiring drivers, we will train. And I said, well, Lord, if I can drive a, a U-Haul and a travel trailer, certainly I can, um, certainly I can drive a school bus. So I applied and within two weeks, um, within two weeks, they, they said, yes, I was here for less than two weeks and I already had the job. But the, the problem with it was I had to uh, be trained. So it was a problem because they wanted me to come um, during Sabbath for, for training. And I said, I'm sorry, I, I, I just can't, I cannot do it on the Sabbath. I'm sorry. And they said, well, you'll just have to wait until the person um, can train you during the week. And so we waited and we waited and we waited. Six months in, I had still not started this job. <laughs> and I said, Lord, I don't think I am cut out for this country living, Lord. Um, in this space, uh, it, it's five of us, it's getting crowded. I still don't have um, property. Oh, so I missed some of the backstory. So, um, and I haven't started working. So let me explain um, point two. The land still isn't in my name. Well, in the six months, I of course had networked with people in the town and met people and became friends with a, a family, a young family that was also um, country living, but not for the reasons we do, just for off-grid living and for a cheaper lifestyle. Um, and they weren't in the church, but still believers from the Sunday faith. Um, but we still became friends anyhow, and I invited them to come to church with us, and they had just brought property. So I purchased property um, within like a the first month or two of being here because um, I was able to pay for it in cash. It was $2,500 for a five acre piece of property and it was close to them. But I didn't move to the property because I didn't get the title or the deed in my name. And I was like, I am not moving <laughs> if I don't, if this property is not mine. And then someone, um, someone tells me, oh, it's, it's not, you know, my property. So I didn't. And then, of course, the job, because I didn't train when they wanted me to, I had been waiting and waiting and waiting to be able to train and get this job. And, of course, I had first time um, homeschooling my children. They just wanted to go back to school. They didn't understand why I was trying to school them. And they said, Mom, this is not school. You're not a teacher. This is awful. <laughs> And they were not very supportive at all, <laughs> um, which I understand because for years they had, you know, just been used to the system and the list goes on. Um, but um, Brother Ernie and other church members were so encouraging and they just told me to hold on. And the Lord in his, his own way told me to hold on a little bit longer because blessings will come soon enough and that they sure did because oops uh oh okay um and they did because the property finally came in my name and I was able to move there um so we got help from the gentleman we were renting from and he drove us to the five acre property because I, I still didn't want to drive it. I could have, but he was willing. So I said, okay, please help me. <laughs> and he helped us move to the, to the five acre property. And I spent the night there and everything that could have went wrong that night went wrong. The solar wasn't set up. So we had no lights. It was chilly, um, chilly out at night. It was dark. I heard javelinas. I heard, I heard, oh, kinds of noises that I was just like, oh no, the city girl was not ready for that. And so the next day I said, hey, will you pick us up and let us come back? <laughs> um, and, and so he did. And, and I'll, oh, the tire, we backed up into a mesquite bush and the tire went flat. And this was all in one day. 
And I said, oh, no, 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 I cannot. <laughs> so we ended up going back to um, the property with um, that we were staying at and stayed there a little bit longer, a few more months. Um, and I was praying. So around this time, it was around December. And I prayed and I said, Lord, and I continued to um, spend time with the family that that uh, helped me find the five acre parcel. But then I noticed um, it's not so good for our families to be close because of the influence from their children. And I'm trying to get my children away from that city mentality while their restrictions for their children wasn't as as what mine were. And I said, Lord, uh, there was some tensions coming to rise between uh, them. And uh, so I said, Lord, I can't, I don't want to move there. And Lord, I'm not trying to be ungrateful, but Lord, it's not, I don't feel right. It doesn't feel right, Lord. If you have something else for me, please help me. Now, during, during this time of me getting ready to move back to the five acre parcel um there was no there's no well no utilities no no anything on the property so in that time i was looking for um water containers storage uh water water containers um and the family told me that they would go to um a, a certain place in town the car wash and and get them so they would throw out the it's the things that the car wash i don't know if any of you may know but they have all of this uh, liquid that they use for the car wash and they come in 16 gallon things. So I was looking for them and every day I would, when I was in town, I would go and look to see if there was any in there. And one day I uh, met an employee that was working there and I said, excuse me, sir, do you have any of those um, water containers? And he said, well, he went and checked and he didn't at the time, but he said, well, I can take your number. And when they come available, because it's only a few months after all the car wash stuff goes through it, that they are empty. And I said, that would be awesome. And he said, but just curious, why do you want them? And I said, well, I have a five, five acre parcel that I want to go to and it's off grid and I need it for um, garden water and, and things like that. And he, he, he was just so impressed. And uh, I was telling him that I homeschool the children and he's like, wow, I just, I really like your, like, um, you know, I like what you're doing. And, and uh, cause I have that same mindset uh, to be off grid. He said, well, you know, I have a, a property that I don't too much um, that I'm not on and I have solar there. Would you be interested in, in buying the solar? And I said, of course, yes. And he told me how many watts. And I was like, oh, that can run a fridge and so many lights and so many things. And I said, okay, yes, um, I would like it. Um, I would like uh, the solar. And he said, okay. Um, so we kept in contact and um, he let me know when more water things came in. So back to um, the the prayer that I had, I said, Lord, you know, I don't think that I want to um, want to go on that five acre parcel, Lord. And I just, if you have something else for me, please, please tell me. And just like that, the gentleman from the car wash, he came into my mind and I said, but Lord, he didn't say he was selling his property. Like, what do I say? And the Lord just gave me the words, to just ask, you know, what is the worst he can say, but no. And so I text him and I said, um, I know you didn't say you were selling your property, but would you be interested in selling it? And he says, well, um, he says, well, I don't know, maybe. And he said, well, go take a look at it. And as he's given me the directions, I said, oh, I know that place. It was close to the place that I had desired property. When I visited here the first two weeks with Uncle Nestor, it was on the same road going in that same area. I remember saying, oh, I would love property in this area. So I got the directions and we came out. Uh, another sister was there um, visiting with me for the day. And, and uh, so we drove out here together and oh, we looked at the property and I just loved it. These pictures here are of the house. So we 
we um came inside the door and I said, oh, it's not a travel trailer. There's space. It's two rooms. Oh my goodness. Look at all the space out here. And we saw the solar and everything. And yes, mice took it over, but I said, there's nothing bleach and, bleach and water couldn't clean up. This is perfect. So I call him and I said, yes, please. And he said, we talked about the property. He said, well, it's 40 acres. I said, 40 acres. I was like, oh no, I was uh, getting discouraged because I said, there's no way I would be able to afford this. And he said, I was want to sell it to you for $25,000, 40 acres with solar and a mobile home. Now, let me tell you, this was a steal to me. Not only was it a steal, but he allowed me to pick how much I can pay him a month. And he didn't even charge me a down payment. He also let me move there whenever I was ready, um, a month uh, a month before he, I even started the payments and we did owner contract. Now I know many of you be th may be thinking just like how I was, oh, that, that's a one in a lifetime opportunity or, or that doesn't happen too often. But let me tell you, God has ways that you wouldn't believe. It doesn't matter. We don't have to understand. We don't have to know. We just have to trust in God and know that he will open the door. He will give you your heart's desires if you're doing his will. And as you can see by these pictures, the house is, is, is um, not in perfect condition, but it was perfect for us. So we decided to go ahead and um, get the property and I was paying on it and in that time as you can see in this next picture the first picture where you see this little guy in red that's the travel trailer that's under that tarp uh that's the one we towed and while i was staying um with the first gentleman that i met with the school bus um i had purchased a fifth wheel from him because i was still under the impression that I'd be going to the five acres. So, so that we can have more space, I was gonna connect the two. And so we ended up getting a travel trailer, the fifth wheel. And this built area here that you see the boy walking into, um, that is a, an add-on to the house. So from the back door, if you can see in that first picture there, there's um, a back door um, and it connects to the house. So, oh, in the second picture, you can kind of see it a little better. You see the blue on the right hand. Anyhow, um, just so many things. We, we were just willing to live any kind of way. And so these bottles, I took more pictures, but I was not able to add it to this presentation. But those milk jugs, those are the milk jugs, the almond milks that I was telling you about. What we would do is go to town and fill up the water and bring it back. And that was what we used for our water. Um, and in time, we upgraded. Uh, in this very far picture to the right, you'll see this green thing. You see wheels, that little green circular thing. The Lord blessed us with a water tank um, from uh, the same gentleman that had the school bus. See, he does auctions and he sells stuff. So now we were able to haul 400 gallons of water and we have them in little IBC totes, which there is in this next slide here, that little white um, um, cart here. Well, yes, that is what we hold waters in. We actually have 11 of them. So our water storage capacity is 3,300 gallons. Um, that picture in the middle, the Roy's battery, we have about six of those deep cycle batteries. And so we use those. But when we started, we only had this picture here. You see this 100 watt. We only used those at first. Um, and that was enough to power um, lights and charge our cell phones. And this bottom picture here is a Mr. Buddy heater. This is what we use to heat ourselves um, during colder months. And it's just with propane. And so... As we moved in, we, we um, have some trials. We had leaky roofs and broken windows and the pest because we are in their territory. Uh, mice like to come and snakes sometimes, though snakes aren't too bad. I've only seen two or three since we've been here in the past couple of years. 
I wouldn't trade it for the wor- for the world because it is character building. And um, so, yes, you see, we had a leak. It's it's much worse now because we um, left a good part of last year or the year that COVID hit. And I went to work um, in Washington because I visited for the summer and got a school bus driving job there. I stayed for half of the school year. I did that um, because I, I wanted to pay off the property quickly. And uh, the wages that they were paying in Arizona, um, I wouldn't have gotten ahead at all. And though um, God again turned that um, to a blessing, even though it hurt us a little bit spiritually, um, financially, it was a gain. And so these are some of the views of, of Arizona that are just beautiful. And so I just want to share with those that may be thinking about leaving or, you know, not leaving or in that process, when to leave. And this is from Sermon Room from Pastor Pava Goya. Um, Leave first the big cities, then other cities, then for the very final crisis, run to secluded places and mountains. Um, When the signs from Matthew 24 become more frequent, and more intense, it is time to leave the big cities. Disasters will hit the big cities first, then everything else. And this other one here, the ungodly cities of our world are to be swept away by destruction and calamities that are now befalling intense buildings in large portions of the city. God is showing us what will come upon the whole earth. Now, these other two pictures are of the local church here. Um, and. Uh, it's just such a wonderful church. And this bottom picture here, we were having a health class. So I just included that so you can see that. I, I just love this community. I just, it is, it is such a blessing. So before I, I close and, and um, come back on screen, I just want to share a few verses that I hope will be encouraging. If God has placed country living in your heart, he will help you go and country live. He will provide your needs, claim his promises. You could start with claiming Matthew 6, 31, 32. Therefore, take no thought, or it's not really a promise, but it is encouraging. Um, Therefore, take no thought saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewith shall we be clothed? For your heavenly father knoweth that ye have needs of all these things. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the thoughts that I have towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. I, maybe that's a typo. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust the Lord with all thine heart, and lead not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. He shall direct thy paths. And that is so true. And the last one, Matthew 7, 7, one of my favorites, ask and it shall be given you, seek and ye shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. These are the kids here. This was <laughs> getting bigger. That's our guard dogs. They are so big now. Actually, if I, you see them as puppies here, but they're right around me, right outside, big as ever right now. And this is just some of us. So, yes. I am going to stop sharing this and okay. Oh. All right, so you guys can see me. I hope you can see in the background a little bit. I want to share before the sun goes down. I'm sorry, I'm on my laptop. That is some of the mountain views behind. Come, children, say hi really quickly. Say hi, they came. Oh, hi. <laughs> this is Alana. Come here, Ajane. This is Ajane, my oldest, 13. Ashan, do you want to say hi really quick? And then you guys can go back to where you were. <laughs> come back. Come say hi, Ashan. Hi. 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 <laughs> Hello. Yes. So. You guys enjoying country living? <laughs> yes. Yes, let me tell you, we um, left them here for a month, and I had someone just come and feed them, and since they've been here since puppies, they stayed, and they stayed home, and they kept the property safe, so oh, wow. get them up. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay.
thank you so 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 much for sharing mm -hmm. and this has been a blessing and hearing how god can take wow not ever thinking that anything is too much for god it's amazing so at this time we will give everybody in the chat an opportunity to ask questions if you have any so you could go ahead and raise your hand we'll acknowledge you and um, of course, if you want to um, put some of your comments in the, the chat, or if you want to raise your hand. I was blessed, though. Yes, I yes, was yes. God is able. Yes. <laughs> he sure is. He sure is. So you could raise your hands. We'll acknowledge you. And you can go ahead and ask your questions, oh, or you can also on. post it in the, the chat if you need to as well. But we have been blessed. So I have yeah. a couple questions. You have a couple questions yourself. Well, let's let um, Delia go first. Oh, Delia, go ahead. I see your hand up. You're on mute. I didn't unmute. I'm sorry. Yes. Hey, Michelle. Okay. Hey, everybody. Hello. I am so excited to hear your testimony. It, it, so we're, we live in Tucson, Arizona. Oh, and we are yes. so excited. We're like, oh, my gosh, she's in Arizona. So we're going to come yes. and visit. Okay. I'm an hour and a half from you. I'm in Wilcox. Oh, okay, 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 okay. All right. So yes. we'll get your info and definitely contact with you so that we could come up there and spend a day with you just to, to get Praise the, the Lord. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Okay. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mitra <laughs> and Lincoln. It's really nice to network. I uh, know. Oh my yeah, gosh. Beautiful is. story. Beautiful yes, story. It is. Yes, yeah. it is. Oh God. Oh, I can't God. wait for us to move. <laughs> Yeah. And Delia, I know your story is just beginning. <laughs> yes, oh, yeah. yes, we're excited. Yes, yes. Yeah. and all, all the stories of everybody saying, "Oh my gosh, what you gonna do, health wise?" What all of these scary <laughs> things? We're like, you know what? Just mm -hmm. hearing your testimony confirms for us that you know what we're doing the right thing for us and not yes, for man. everybody else. You know, yeah. some Amen. of the similar lines, some of the similar stuff that you 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 pointed out. We we've already went through it. <laughs> Yeah, still going through even now. So it's 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 amazing how God is putting, you know, putting us together, uh, and yes. we all on, on one track. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. We'll let somebody else speak now. Michelle, we'll talk soon. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. From you. Same here. <laughs> all right. Anybody have any questions or comments that they'd like to um share? or ask at this moment, if we have nobody as yet, what I will do, I'll ask my own question. Um, how do you work with the solar? Like how, how many things do you actually have on your solar? Okay, so um, we right now run the refrigerator. So okay. we got made sure we bought the refrigerator new and bought it as um, energy efficient. So we you have to look at your app, amps uh -huh. running. Um, the lights, um, yeah, fans, um, we have swamp coolers when it's hot, um, but we have to be careful, but we don't, but the most important thing for us was mostly, um, the fridge because that's electric, um, heat wise, we try to do propane. We're kind of freezing now because <laughs> the weather just changed on us, like out of nowhere. <laughs> so we try to do as much. Yes. Even before that, I don't know, like last night it was in 40, 43 degrees. It was freezing. <laughs> so That's we try to use cool. like propane heat and, and things like that. Um, but right now we can run mostly all household appliances for a very short okay. time, but we mostly use it just for our fridge and lights all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. all right. yeah. I know, I know the, the of good mindset. You have to run the priorities. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the question good. came up that I see. No, I, I don't feel afraid living here alone. I don't feel I'm I'm alone. Um, the Lord is with me and I have my fortune to go get Devante. I have a 16 year old that will scare anybody because he is like six, 
four, he, <laughs> they look at him and they think he's a man. He's like a football <laughs> NFL player. I, and then my two guard dogs. So I, I, I don't yeah. fear. Amen. Um, no. <laughs> Amen. I see a hand um, up, Sam. You can go ahead. Yes, I, I actually do not have a question. It's just a comment. Um, oh, sure, go ahead. Just, just an amazing and awesome um, testimony. Um, I, I must say the testimony had me smiling for quite some oh. time. <laughs> I particularly, my, my smile particularly broadened when I heard the connection made between she and the couple earlier and made me realize how marvelous God is and how he works mm. and how he's allowing for um, that connection to me. It's just an, an, an amazing and awesome testimony. I just want to wish God's blessings upon um, Michelle and her, and her family. <laughs> Thank you. And this is why I don't scare. Do you see this boy? Let me stand yes. so you can see how tall he is compared to me. Oh, come stand next to me so they can see. Oh, wow. This way. Yes. So, no, not scared. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Thanks so much for sharing, Sam. It, it really warms our heart when people mm. can connect. And that's what it's all about. It's getting to know other people with the same mm. mindset with you, understanding how we're trying to move into the country mm -hmm. and, getting support. and getting that support. Yeah. Knowing so that important. others have gone before. Yes. yes. And have done it. And there are trials. It's not oh, like yeah. just a... Oh, yeah. One that just step into the country and, and all goes gonna, well. Yeah. Okay, I see another hand. Um, mm -hmm. go ahead. Okay, yes. Hi guys, can you hear me? Yes, yes we, we can. can. Yes. Okay, great. So first of all, I just want to thank Mitra and her husband for having this platform that we can use to connect and, like you said, network with people. Yeah. And I want to thank Michelle here. Thanks so much for sharing because this is an amazing testimony. I mean, my husband and I have been thinking about country living. Um, we've been praying about it, uh, wanting to find ways of, you know, how to get going on it. And Mitra and M has been such a great support because all the, you know, how you say it all the zoom meets that we always on with you guys making sure we have mm -hmm. our notes taking things down and then the fact that you have you know people like michelle coming on board testimonies give being given it gives us more encouragement on our end to know that we are making that that big move but yet the right thing because you know we're living in the last days we don't want to be trapped in the city and knowing that you know it's going to be too late for us so we want to make that big move. So we just want to thank you, Michelle, so much and just continue to do what you're doing and trust in the Lord. All right. Amen. 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 Thank, thank you, so, you much so much for sharing. We see there are also some comments in the chat. Um, somebody yes, was asking was trying to look at. about, let me see if it, um, how do you navigate getting a family doctor? I don't. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> listen. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't. Traditional medicine. Even before I learned about um, um, really the health message. Yes. Even before that, um, I took. I did massage therapy, and I realized even in school that the doctors guess a lot. And even some of my own experiences, for example, when we first moved into the travel trailer, I wish I had this picture. My daughter, the baby girl got bit by something. She was swollen like this big, her neck. She still literally has a, like she had a hole. I know, but I can't share with them. Had um, a big swollen, took her to the doctor. She was a baby, six months. And I said, doctor, you know, what's going on with her neck? They told me it was a swollen lymph node. And I said, there's no way. I said, she went to sleep. I bathed her. She had no mark, no, no swollen lymph node. A few hours later, she wakes up screaming and crying and swollen. Um, and I'm just sharing this one little test, this little, you know, part. And so I, uh, I, they had me in there, they x-rayed her, they had me in there like, well, I've been an ER doctor for 17 years and blah, blah, blah. Um, it's a swollen lymph node. I said, okay. I literally took my child out of the, the hospital, took her home, 
and I prayed and praise the Lord. My grandma had a, a, a Hispanic lady at the house. We took the aloe vera, roasted it, put it on her thing, and it opened it up and a worm came out of my child's neck. A swollen lymph node. That's oh, why. Wow. <laughs> That's oh. why. Just other reasons like that. I don't trust the doctors. I, I prefer to trust God and knows that he has made us wonderfully and fearfully made. And there's nothing under Amen. the sky. He's made Amen. every herb of the field for us. So, Amen. <laughs> guys, I'm lying. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have children. We know what oh, that's like. Oh, trust me. We, we know what that's like. Uh, we had our daughter in there yes. just a while ago, hopping from one person to the next. Um, so thank you so much for sharing. One of the yeah. things I would, I would like to add to that as well is, um, at some point when we're going to have difficulties in buying and selling, yeah. it, it's a good time to start practicing learning nice. what, to what to do. Okay, so um, somebody asked, do you have internet access? Clearly. Oh, I'm guessing, I yeah. Guess asking, what kind of internet access? Well, um, there is internet access, um, not through the... Because, you know, they have satellite internet now and they have your mobile phone and the, those hotspots. So right now, I actually just today, just to make sure this connection was good for you guys, I went to Verizon <laughs> and got a new plan and uh, the connection has not failed us yet. So Verizon and check the area that you're going to for internet provider and see who's the best. Yeah. Amen. That's, amen. That's what we do as well. We do self cell phone. Internet. Yeah, yeah. That's how we get our internet yeah. as well. Because we upgrade as well. Yes. Okay. Oh, Sam, yeah. Go ahead. Yes. Um, Michelle, I remember you said earlier on. Um, your mom said that she would call the authorities on your phone. <laughs> how did your mom come around? <laughs> oh, we've been there. <laughs> yes, <yeah>. Well. <laughs> So God is good. So <laughs> she told me her fear was, was um, her fear was that I was going off grid and that I didn't know anybody and that I wasn't going to have running water. And she was okay. like, oh no, like not going to the cave. And so she has come <laughs> around since and she actually wants to, she's still in the islands. She still wants to come, but we've connected now because um, she's, prepping i'm i'm big on to not yet gardening but like getting grains and beans and things like that so we talk right. a lot okay, about sorry. stuff like that so she's very supportive now but a couple years ago no i'm sure you will agree it was a legitimate mother's concern yes yeah. yes <laughs> okay um how do you manage the bills? Okay, manage the bills. Do you cultivate the land? Okay, I guess you just answered that one. <clears throat> um, uh, the bills, I was still kind of working. Um, I do get a little bit of the children's father. Um, uh, but the, the bills now are so minuscule because I was sharing a part that I, I went to Washington. I went back and forth. Um, so since after COVID, when COVID hit, I was working. So I was able to save up quite a bit. And pretty much the property is almost paid off. The reason it's, it's not is because the property across from me, um, it's a group that uh, they're very worldly group. If anybody's familiar with Burning Man or Saguaro Man, that's their group. And so I was fearful to... Um, so, excuse me to pay the property off because of that group coming it's like a group of 600 and or more and they come out and they camp and they practice nudity and burning mm. statues and worldliness wow. yeah, so I, know, I, know I said is. satan yes i said wow. satan you know you are so mad that we have found this area and because we're amidst sda but well, we prayed and listen they were supposed to be here the 16th they're supposed to be here. We prayed. The church came together and we prayed. And they're not here. Amen. They couldn't Amen. come. Amen. So we're just going to keep praying that eventually they sell that and some more SCA could come because it's 80 yeah. acres. So anybody yeah. pray about it. 
We need to pray that they put that property on the market for them. Yes. Yes. And that is that is what we seek to do help persons to network so that we can have neighbors that are like-minded mm -hmm. so support we can system. yeah so we can have that support system one person can be a farmer the other person can be a builder mm -hmm. and we work together and we all nest we all can be on separate properties mm -hmm. but we're close by um somebody yes. has a question in the chat do your children get bored and do they complain of course they get bored and complain <laughs> um, <laughs> But right now they're over here running around. The little ones, not so much. Yeah. It was harder when we first came. Um, it was a lot harder for the older ones when we first came. The little ones are okay. ones are always outside running around playing, as you can hear him now. <laughs> but the older ones had a harder time. But we we were here, and then when we went back to Washington, my my older daughter's like, okay, I'm ready to go back to Arizona. I didn't appreciate it until now, until going from country living to city for a little bit and then country again she was like oh yeah i'm done with city so yeah Ooh, and nice. there's a big you know lots of children here now and we have a lot of church families so they're able to connect with other children and still do that okay you guys are being distracting and i'm getting loud because i'm trying to talk over you so so please quiet a little bit thank you so yes i hope i answered that they get bored yes. but i don't care <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Transition is always if they get bored. I say there's some weeds over there to pull. There's something you could clean. There's always something to do. There's yeah, no yeah, time for boredom yeah, here. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. When you start the garden, they'll have a lot more stuff to do. I, I'm gardening, sorry, I didn't hear. I said when you start gardening, they'll have a lot more stuff to do. And when they oh yes, what they grow, that's quite exciting. Mm -hmm. My son loves yes. Yes, that's that's the, the that's the fun part for him. That's yeah. the fun part. Harvesting is the best. <laughs> yes, and when he's when he gets bored, he goes climbing some of the trees around the place. Yeah. Okay. Um yes. Sam, go ahead. Yes, I have another question. <laughs> Michelle, how challenging is it for you to as a single mom manage 40 acres? Um I don't know because I stay in this little two acre area. <laughs> I, I don't fool with the, you know, the, this little area, we're trying to clear it out because I eventually want to do the area behind me. The house is on that side. We have a shed here that I'm in front of, but I want to do a straw bale home because it's good for insulation. It's very cheap. So that's the plan. And I do want to dedicate a lot of the property to, to because, you know, we're called to be medical missionaries. So I do want to have a few more areas on the property for other people that that weren't able to um purchase there so that they can come when that time comes Amen. on another part of the area and possibly um selling some maybe i don't know but i'm i'm leaving that up to the lord to tell me what to do with the rest all right thank you amen and it's yes. wise to not um take on the entire property mm -hmm. you started the area that you spend time with and you expand as, as you become you, yeah. yes uh, yeah, yes. that's the zoning that we're going to be talking about soon. I think yeah. tomorrow we're going to be so talking that's your about zone zero. Yes, yeah, so that's the house. Your, yep, and that's the one you take care of and you do your work in in the meantime. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Vanessa Ka Cuffy, go ahead. I don't know if she's. I see your mic and mute that. I don't know if you. We can. Are you sounds like water? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I'll let her um get that yeah. organized. But yes, it's a really good to start the just around you, and then you just add and add as you as you grow. And I love the idea, and we always share that with a family. Those who can afford large pieces mm -hmm. always think of those coming after who may not necessarily be able to afford. Well, what struck me is the price of land compared to the Caribbean. Yes, 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 yes. In the Caribbean, you thirteen thousand an acre is 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 cheap for an acre. Yes, but that's behind the way in the back where yes. there's no road or anything. <laughs> yes. And you said you got initially you got five acres for two thousand five hundred dollars. Yeah, that's like a miracle. In the Caribbean, <laughs> you could get one acre for half a million dollars. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> so where you go, I know. 
feel it pricey. So yeah. that's that's prison. I'm thinking maybe we should even move to America. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You can't grow all that tropical stuff you guys have I, and you I guys are gonna be eating good. Very, 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 very. <laughs> yes. So we're gonna leave open for a few more questions and then we can do our okay. closing exercises. Mm -hmm. So feel free to either post your comments in the chat or um, raise your hand and we will acknowledge you. And actually what I'm gonna do here for anybody that wants, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and add my email. So oh, anybody yes, go ahead and do that. that wants to contact, I see some direct messages, but I can't even see that it's going yeah, in. So, yes, so just go ahead and yes, contact me. Yeah, so just, you can call out the email address. I can type it in for you. Or if you want to. I think I'm getting it. You can, oh, okay, you're getting it. All right, awesome. You can turn all the time. Yeah, so, okay, I see Atronol has um, the hand up. You can go ahead while she's just <laughs> typing up her email address in the chat. Thank you so much. I'm really blessed that this phenomenon opened up the way. Oh, Atrinals, I'm not hearing you very clearly if you're speaking. No, let's speak up. Can I speak a little louder? Are you hearing me now? Yes, yes, much better now. Okay, wonderful. Right, I was just saying good night, and um, I was just in, inspired by Michelle's testimony. I really appreciate you guys doing this you know open up the way for those of us who are really dreaming thinking and yearning to do what you're doing um one question i would love to ask her is um how does she monitor her children's spiritual life oh mm -hmm. the country. okay thank you for that question oh. <laughs> well um we can you hear me yes yeah? you can so yeah. We have morning and evening worship. Uh, their homeschool curriculum is Bible-based, so that sunlight is Bible-based. We've gotten a little bit away from it, but we will resume again. On Tuesdays, we go to Bible studies um, at, at the library for, from our church. Um, and I just talk to them. I mean, they're out here because of something spiritual. I, I just share with them. They're always hearing me listen to sermons or safe to serve or something they're always hearing stuff so um with the older ones it's a little bit harder um because you know they're older um but they're coming around and they see they see the that the world uh, you know what the world is doing they can't help but to respect the lord and and mm -hmm. understand that we're here and and it may not be the easiest but they know that this is for their for their best good. So spiritually, I just I just really try to dedicate them to the mm -hmm. Lord every day and myself because I still have a lot of growth. Um, but that's how I do it the best I can. Is um Amen. just trying. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Good job. Yeah. Thank Let you. me tell you, God. God looks upon the effort and mm -hmm. he he does the rest. I honestly say they have some angels teaching as well <laughs> when when it comes to us as parents i said they have some angels doing some work as well um i see yeah. another hand Mar moro go ahead i can can you all hear me yes, yes we, can. we can oh i just want to thank you michelle for for that it was right on time there's some things i've been watching listening to i'll go on youtube trying to look at these Karens. I kind of get a kick out of these women losing their minds. But the Lord is like, like I spent a whole day doing that one day. And the Lord says, so how did we grow spiritually today? I said, huh? And so I, <laughs> I said, oh Lord, the things that I got to do, the things I got to prepare for, this, can that really take up a day? So the next morning I got up, I said, Lord, order my day. And I was looking at things having to do with these last days. And I mean, it wasn't like one thing I'm just wearing myself out on. And when you mentioned Save the Serve, I started watching them in 2018. And I was like, my church is not talking about this. I even kind of went to the pastor about it. And so he, what he told, what he told me, I kind of bought it. But at the same time, I'm going, no, because we will be acting different if we were getting this message. And I haven't left that church. 
But I see now an opportunity to just talk to people one-on-one -on -one and make them know how urgent things are. But your testimony really helped me because I'm sitting here and I'm learning about, um, oh, when you go to get some land, even poor people can get land, but when you go to get land, make sure it's not in the 100-year flood zone. Make sure this and that. And I was like, oh. And then I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Because, Lord, whenever you took me to something new, you gave me the information months, days ahead of time. And boom, I just happened to have it when I need it. So I know that he'll bring it back to my memory. But I'm so encouraged because your testimony right here, your whole presentation, and I'm so glad you guys, thank you guys for recording this because my kids can't watch at the same time that I do. You know, I have time to watch. But my, when I told my daughter what I was watching tonight, I said, but they're recording it. You'll be able to watch it. Oh, okay. And that was the first positive response I got out of her. Like, look, we need to get ready. So I just, mm -hmm. I want to thank you. It was so inspiring. It was so right on time. And I've been experiencing these right on time blessings for like the past, for the past few months. Just one thing after another. No effort on my part. Mm -hmm. It's just like, uh, Father, what now? And boom, there it is. So thank you so much. Amen. You're amen, welcome. Amen. Amen. Uh, one thing I like to add, though, that God will use whoever to get the message across. Amen. Whoever He has to use, He will use it to get the message across. So we have to have the yes, he will. yes. We have the voice of God saying what we ought to do. And I, I just want to add, you know. Um, I had a big problem with that because being a baby and wanting to do these things like, okay, I read it, I have to believe it, and, but not having a church or someone that you can go to, it it's tough. So, you know, go ahead and search outside of the church, you know. Um, my church that I left in Washington, yeah, uh, and, you know, even, yeah, you just, God will give you what you need long as you are seeking, um, but it, it is tough to want to do these things and learn these things and not being fed spiritually in the nominal churches. And it's tough to say that. And it's, but you know, we have to remember, we're going to go through a shaking and yeah. some people that we see today, we won't see tomorrow. And uh, that's, that's a tough one. Like something was said uh, this Sabbath that, you know, we shouldn't, uh, the, the, the pastor, the person speaking said this Sabbath, um, if you are stockpiling food and toilet paper, stop it. I was like, stop <laughs> hold on that's that's for the little time of trouble which is what we're going into because i'm not gonna bow the knee and i'm gonna need to have provisions you know and so we just have to know what thus saith the lord and that's what i've been doing uh somebody blessed me with the bible because i had another bible that i wouldn't mark it i didn't want to underline it i didn't want to highlight it and someone blessed me with the bible and i've been marking that thing highlighting that thing so that we can know for ourselves what thus saith the lord what does the lord want and require of me that's the amen. only person you have to answer to mm -hmm. that's all amen. i would say hey, so amen. God bless your and I i'll be praying for you and, and I wanted to add to that, too, um, another thing that, you know, how the Lord doesn't tell us each other's business, you know, what we don't need to know about each other. But one thing he gave me was a piece that I can't see everything that's going on. And people know things that I don't know they know. So don't worry about the church. Do what he lead me to do. And although I watch say to serve, some people at my church really put that place down. I'm going, ah, but he's backing it up. Bible, spirit of prophecy. So uh -uh, I'm sticking with this. And at the same time, you know, we did a thing where we went out and um, took groceries. Well, they did took groceries out to people. And they said some have asked for Bible studies. And the Lord is really impressing upon me. Once again, go out there and do Bible study. So thank you again. And I hear what you're saying about that. Yes. Amen. Thank you yeah. so much for that. Uh, I noticed, I think we have another. Uh, okay, Sam, go ahead. And then we'll do some. Closing. Yeah, this question is not from Michelle. Um, it's just a request. Can you, before we end tonight, go over again how to get the recording on your website? Because I've oh, been yes, there. yes, yes. We'll do the demonstration again on how okay. you can go to our website mm -hmm. and get the recordings, and um, even from the past sessions that has um, that we have done. So we okay. will definitely do that before. We yeah, do. I went looking for and I had some difficulties, so I would appreciate okay. that. Okay. Okay. We'll go for it again. I should try to make it a little bit easier, a little more easier. <laughs> I'll, I'll do that. So we'll go through that again. Um, thank you so much for coming on mm -hmm. and sharing your testimony. It was mm -hmm. a blessing the first time I heard it and to see the kids and to see 
that God can really provide, provide and open yes. up the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. This is what I saw it as. And he likes the impossibility. Yes, he does. Yeah. Yes, he does. And a lot of persons think because they're they're single they or they're, they're on their own, they don't have money, it's just impossible for them. But mm -hmm. your a testimony says that God can. If you're willing to, to make the, the move, you're willing to say, Lord, I'm ready to take that step. He will guide you. And the beautiful mm -hmm. thing about God, he allows you mm -hmm. to meet the people that you need, That's the resources. Yes. So be nice. Yeah. It seems nice. <laughs> I speak to people. Yes, get yes, yes, nice. yes. Yeah. So yeah. thank you once again for sharing um, your testimony with us mm -hmm. and for joining us this evening. Um, so at this moment, we will go to a little a word of prayer, mm -hmm. just to pray for those who are seeking to make that move mm -hmm. and those who need the, the, the extra prayer to make that final decision, maybe to buy a particular property mm -hmm. or to choose a particular property. So at this moment, we'll just bow our heads, say a short prayer, and then we'll go into our closing exercises. Mm -hmm. Father, I just want to thank you once again, Lord, for another opportunity to get to come before you, Lord. Father, we all have our needs, we all have our expectations, Lord, but deep down in our hearts, Lord, we have decided that we want to follow you. This is the only reason we're here, Lord. We could have been elsewhere, we could have been watching other things, Lord, but we're here because we want you to guide us. We want to know, Lord. We want to hear his voice saying, this is the way we walk in it, Lord. We thank you for the, the testimony of Sister Michelle, Lord. It proves, Lord, that you are not a God who cannot work anymore, that you do work for your children, Lord. So we submit our lives to your will, asking that to guide us, asking that to give us direction, help us meet those that we need to meet, talk to those we need to talk to, see what we need to see. Lord, may this be, this ministry be a means of bringing persons together as well, Lord, that we can finish this book and we can share this gospel for all the world, Lord, as a witness, Lord, because we would have been living lives that demonstrates that we love you, and we have an encounter with you, and that love will trickle from us to the world, Lord. And by this, men would ask, what must I do to be saved? Can protect us even tonight, Lord. And may your name be glorified even more for our lives. Yes, my prayer. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you once again for joining us, everyone. So we're going to go into our little demonstration.